Hey everyone, uh, I'm back with another episode in our video series here on Paginate Reports, and today we're going to start talking about parameters. This will probably be a few separate items that we go through with parameters, but I want to get folks started, especially folks who are struggling with the concept of parameters with their Power BI data sets. So with a Power BI data set and Paginate Reports, there is no concept like there is in Power BI desktop file of having a... Uh, slicer or filter that users use to kind of uh, trim down data or see specific cuts of data at runtime. There is, however, the concept of parameters, and the majority of times that you're using parameters, you're using it in the context of something called a query parameter. So what that means is every time you run a new value through or value or values through your uh, parameter selections, it's going back to the server and rerunning a query. So it's going back and fetching data from the server at that point. Now there's some advantages and disadvantages to this, but one of the big advantages is you don't have to worry about pulling back more data than what is than what's returned with the query. So you you potentially have some significant ways you can improve performance or limit the number of rows that people bring back at a time to make sure the report experience is exactly what they need. Uh, if you've uh, read anything on the blog or th uh, thought about the uh, the subscription capabilities, you, you know, one of the big things we added was the ability to set parameters per subscription for your pagination report. So you can allow users to set different cuts or views of the data based on the parameter values they're selecting for their report. So let's show you a basic example of how this works initially. And this is going to be one where you, you know, I interact with this as little as possible. And it's a very, uh, it's just to get you started. And if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen me talk about a magic button uh, to enable multi-value parameters. What that's really doing is also enabling a special kind of DAX to be sent because oftentimes you can still get the multi-value parameter to work. It's just not very good DAX that's generated and it oftentimes can cause issues with your query and it's not really uh, something that's going to give you the best experience. So if I go here, I want to set my parameter on a data set. And you see I have a parameters folder here, but I'm going to start from the data set. So I go to the data set properties, and right now there's no parameters actually set for this particular query. So right now I have a very basic query, if you remember from an earlier video, where I just have the country, city, and sales amounts coming back. So I'm going to go into my query designer, and again, I've got to go connect back to the Power BI service here. So it's going, and I'm already authenticated, but it does take time to go and connect to the endpoint and bring back all the different items uh, in my query designer. And so once this comes up, what I'll be able to do is go and actually say, okay, what dimension do I want to actually uh, use as a parameter? So here, if I just run the query real quick, you'll see I'm just getting back the basic information right now. Uh, the magic button that I mentioned that actually enables multi-value parameters is this one right here. So if you click that, it'll enable it. Now something to keep in mind, we may go, we're actually looking to improve this experience where we're either going to have this on by default or we're just always going to leave it on for folks so they don't have to worry about this in the future because I have seen customers actually forget to click this and the DAX that they're generating for their scenarios is very, very uh, inefficient in times. So if I go and I say, all right, I want to use uh, the eBay uh, table and I want to grab the country, I'm just going to use equals and I want to set this as a parameter. Oftentimes what people do is they immediately go and they start selecting items from their filter expression. Don't do that. Just go ahead and check the parameters item first, then go. Because if you do it in the reverse order, it'll clear your selections and you've got to go back here anyway. So if I go and choose Belgium, Germany, and the United States, don't check the all box. Uh, you'll have the ability to select all from the parameter dropdown, so you don't need to go and select that. Uh, but you just select the different items that you want available there. If you need to have all these items selected, sure, go ahead and check that and then uncheck that box. But you want to make sure users have the ability to select uh, any one of these or a combination of these if you're using multi-value parameters. So you see there I have Belgium, Germany, United States. So if I click to execute this query, uh, it's going to still bring me back all the records at this point. But what I'm doing is I'm giving my end users the ability to choose those when they go and view the report. So I'll click OK. And you'll see here that the uh, data set comes back. And the DAX is going to update here, and you'll see that there's a special bit of DAX that's written as part of this uh, when the expression here, or the query here changes. <clears throat> so it's thinking, and it's going to go ahead and update the DAX here. And 
And you see there it says evaluate summarize columns and it's got an RS custom DAX filter. This was a special bit of DAX written specifically for reporting services. This isn't documented anywhere. People have asked about it and it really doesn't have any value outside of using it with an RDL, either with the service or with a uh, Power BI report server or SQL server reporting services. So you'll see now uh, it's going to go and evaluate a custom filter for this parameter value when people go and select this at runtime. You'll see also here that there's a parameter item listed there and I click OK and it actually automatically generates the parameter for me because you'll see now in my design screen I now have country here and this will be a parameter uh, drop down that people can choose when they run the report. So if I double click on this I'll see that it's given the name eBay country to the specific parameter value. This is important uh, if you saw that we recently announced the URL parameter support. This would be the name of the parameter that you need to set in your URL uh, to actually enter a value there at runtime. The prompt is what the text that shows up for the end user. So I could change this to say select country to view. All right. And by default, allowing a blank value is allowed and allowing multiple values is allowed. I'm going to uncheck the allowing a blank value. Then you'll see here the available values comes from this query that was generated. And the default values, it's called out Belgium, Germany, and the United States. It's actually gone and found the values that would be available for default and put them in here for me. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to run this. And you'll see my label here has changed. And sure enough, I've got three, all three countries uh, being passed back to get their data back, and all of them come back as part of the return. You'll see here, like I mentioned, select all is there. So if I uncheck that and just check Belgium and then rerun the report, it's just going to bring back Belgium for me. There you go. Now, let's say I didn't want to allow people to select more than one value. I could change this to just say... Uh, I don't allow multiple values. And then multiple default values are specified for a parameter. So that's where you'd have to go and say for your default value, you want to get rid of one of these or say, sorry, I don't even want a default value. So something to keep in mind, uh, if I go and I'll say, I'll just delete these to say just Belgium is available as a default value, and then rerun it. And again, there you go. I've got Belgium, Germany, and the United States available to me. So we try to help you out a bit with the parameter selection in the context of this particular scenario. Uh, there's a lot of gotchas to this that I'll cover in some additional videos when you're getting into more advanced scenarios. But for a simple Power BI data set, for a data set where you have a fairly straightforward uh, set of data coming back, this is an easy way to get started with parameters, and especially uh, using multi-value parameters, which is something folks have not really been able to do efficiently before with DAX and uh, SSRS reports or pageant reports. Thanks very much.